Hey, Rizin, what's up? Hey, hi, hi. What is up, my friend? Yeah, a lot of things happened last week. We had a workshop last week. Yeah. We had a, uh, we have a complete uh, working demo of the lesson theme. Oh, we have a working demo? Yeah. Oh my God. This is a, this is a surprise for me. Uh, how was the other, except for the ordering tool, uh, is directly created using the API. Okay. Uh, so last week we uh, planned for creating the lesson theme, uh, deploying the deploying to production, and also uh, the workshop. Mm -hmm. So we have completed those things. Uh, right now, if you go to remixvia.org, uh, you can uh, go and create a new account and start creating a lesson uh, using the 360 image template. Uh, the lesson template is not uh, set up uh, in the front end since uh, our ordering tool is not ready. Uh, but you can definitely go and create the 360 image based um, lessons. Okay. So, uh, and we also have a working demo of the lesson theme, which, uh, which can have like multiple types of spaces. Uh, so, we have one 360 image space and a 360 video space. We'll see how, how it works. Uh, and in terms of workshop, uh, we had teachers from our, around three or four schools, uh, about 15, 20 teachers. Uh, we shared uh, uh, like what I think, I think there were like 25 teachers from what I saw yeah. in, the, in the photos, yeah. Yeah. So we, we talked about what virtual reality is and uh, and also, like they shared the concerns about uh, how it would can be implemented, that kind of stuff. We'll go in detail a little bit later. Okay. So first, let's see. Uh, let me let me share my screen. I'll show you the demo of the 360 lesson thing. No, I think we saw the demo of the 360 lesson thing, right? Oh, is it? Yeah, last time. Sure. The the two uh, slides one. Uh, the two slides one. No, I don't think it's we don't saw the two slides one. All right, let me show that. Can you see? Yeah. Yeah. Right now, I'm on the Remixia dashboard. Uh, so anyone can go to remixia.org and uh, just create an account, and you'll be able to uh, create a new project. So. We have already shown how this the, the normal project creation works, so I'm not gonna go go again doing that one. So let me show the 360 lesson theme demo. So in this thing, as you can see, I have already loaded the 360 the first space, which is a 360 image one. And here, in the bottom uh, corner, you can see the next button here. So this is how it would come, and uh, when you click on the next one. It loads uh, the next space, which should be the 360 video space. Just to uh, just to tell our viewers, it is slow because of the fact that we are recording the call as well as playing Skype and all of that stuff. But yes. it's yeah. fast otherwise. Yeah, and all of this, yeah. The network is a little bit slow, so it's kind of paused, like uh, moving very slow. But essentially, this this would be uh, playing here, and uh, here again you can see the previous button. If there was one more space, uh, the next button would be appearing here, uh, right next to the previous one. Yeah. So that's how you would navigate to the next space um, mm. inside the VR itself. Got it. So so just to give uh, just to like explain this in in uh, in an easier way. Uh, if a teacher wants to create a lesson for uh, Taj Mahal, right? Uh, they can uh, immersively. They can not. They can use three different kind of immersive content types to create that lesson. So you can start off by showing the showing the student, hey, you know, this is how it looks. You can show them like a virtual tour or a 360 image, and then you can take them to a live 360 video so that they can they can have a better understanding of it. And uh, if you want a more realistic view, then you can kind of look at a 3D image or a 3D model that 
uh, we are going to add in the next update where you know you can kind of like think of think of it as I think uh, for the viewers or the teachers that are thinking about it like I think they should sort of think of it as just like a PowerPoint presentation but in VR using all the immersive uh, types that we have which is 3D object 360 video and 360 photo so um so in terms of so the next point is are uh, the workshop with our teachers mm -hmm. so let me stop sharing the screen and uh, talk about it so in in the uh, workshop teachers really uh, like the concept of vr and ability to see uh, things up close and around you uh, and uh, like there are two main concerns. One is um, we also need to educate teachers about virtual reality. The technology is so new that most of the teachers didn't know uh, what it was and yeah. like ex were experiencing it for the first time. So it was tricky uh, to explain just what VR is. Uh, that would be one challenge. Next one would be what the main concern teachers had was uh, how would you know if the students are actually looking at what they are supposed to, or they, are they just looking at something else? Uh, if it was a laptop or uh, or a computer, they could just look over the students' screen and they could see what they're working on. But in a VR headset, they, uh, you cannot go and see what the student is looking at. So that that's something we need, we need to look at uh, how to solve. Uh, another thing is like. Uh, uh, another feedback I heard is like, how can the teacher control the what students are seeing? So in our lessons, uh, we have the next buttons, but the next button needs to be triggered by the user who is using it. So maybe a little later we can add some way where the teacher, the main controller can can kind of click the next button and it would go to the next slide or the next lesson for all the users connected to that thing. Yeah, uh, actually, this reminds me of the product that we built uh, uh, with the remote control stuff. So I think it's definitely possible, but I don't know how possible it is with web VR. Yeah, we need to look at how to solve that too, yeah. or and how to make it easy so that you just know the students are inside the inside the space they are supposed to look at. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the main points. Uh, so. Yeah, we'll be sharing a blog post about it with uh, all the information and like feedback from teachers and all the stuff uh, in this week. Uh, and we'll also be working on the authoring tools uh, so you can create uh, the lesson lesson based VR stuff uh, from the front end. Uh, right now, I created it using the API directly. So later, you can uh, the user will be able to choose between the 60 image or the 60 video uh, type. So once that is ready, we have the ingredients uh, for the platform. So after that, once the platform is uh, is kind of ready already, so the next step would only be uh, the adding more templates and uh, creating more content. That would be the uh, final final part of it to make it useful. Uh, in the workshop, one other thing I was able to show was like I was able to show like the creation part of it where I, I took the 360 photo of the school itself and uh, like created a lesson. So I also demonstrated a way where the teachers themselves can create a lesson from scratch. Uh, take the 360 image by themselves, I showed them. Uh, you can just use a mobile app for it. And uh, yeah, so that that's also a powerful thing uh, where anyone can just create these lessons. and. Uh, and like it can be shared into a common pool of lessons where any teacher can go and search for it and just use it in their classrooms. And I think the 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 good thing about this is like say for example a teacher in um, you know let's say North India right uh, where Hindi is like a uh, is a medium of study creates an amazing uh, lesson about Taj Mahal right. And uh, someone in Kerala, where the medium of language usually teachers use is Malayalam, they can actually literally take the take that same lesson, change the uh, the language on it, and actually present it as a lesson in Malayalam. Yeah, and I think that that is really powerful because otherwise a teacher would have to actually, you know, I mean, an organization would have to, you know find 
Malayalam content or like local language content, uh, which is very difficult to get, right? So I think, uh, you know, hopefully in, in like the later stages, we are going to have these like text boxes and these like what we call as uh, teaching tools, right? Uh, the, what we had discussed uh, to be easily modified based on language and so that it can have different versions that can be used. Uh, and the teachers have full flexibility to, to customize a certain lesson um, based on, you know, uh, their local needs. So I think that would be, like you said, it would be like the main sort of final goal is like, I create a lesson and like 50 other teachers in 50 different countries, different places with different languages can take that lesson, change the teaching tools on it and present it as a lesson to the students. Yeah. And I think this, this like the fact that we did this workshop in like a really small rural place, a small town in Kerala, really demonstrates like our sort of target audience. I would say, I would, I would, I would say like it, it, it's not, it's not like a really small place where you know you would have very a high level of difficulty in getting technology, but it is not so standardized in terms of its access to technology, its access to English speaking people and so on and so forth that uh, they could easily do it. So I think it, it was a good place to like run that workshop. Because if you if you if you would have run that workshop say in like a big city like Bangalore, right? Like Bangalore, you know, it doesn't have the same challenges that uh, Trishur has, right? Both in terms of language of speaking, access to technology, uh, so on and so forth. Yeah. That was cool. And so, you, are you saying that by next 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 call, we're gonna have uh, the the lesson the lesson team ready with the UI? Yeah, the lesson. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the goal. Okay, that would be awesome, man. I mean, I think once that is done, then I think uh, I would say like a majority of our kind of work is at building like the main base of the platform is kind of kind of complete. Yeah. Um, and uh, we can start focusing on the global citizenship product uh, yeah. and, and start building that out. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for conducting that workshop. You know, I mean, I yeah. think. Uh, it's been uh, my pleasure. Sorry? It, it's, it was my pleasure. Yeah, pleasure. yeah. And I think, uh, you know, we have always sat in the rooms and built software. So it was very good, I think, both for you. Uh, I mean, I've done this going to schools thing. But it was, I think, good for you to like maybe interact with teachers and understand how they think and, you know, how I, I would say, would you say like they are pessimistic about new technology? They are optimistic. They are scared. How do you think the teachers? Are? They are optimistic, but uh, especially with VR, um, there's a lot, in, a lot of stuff involved. Especially the cost of the headsets and that kind of stuff. Uh, they recently just uh, recently started using laptops and projectors in the classroom which was uh, provided by the government. So in terms of we are provided by the government, they don't see it coming so soon. But with web VR, the only advantage is that you can, you don't need a VR headset, you can just use a laptop and project the same yeah. devices and still have the, just if the content is there, uh, you can just use it. Yeah, that makes like, sense. Yeah, and like where schools with uh, these kind of devices are already present, where the students have mobiles, and stuff already uh, in the hands of the students. Uh, in those places, they can experience a full VR. Uh, that medium can be experienced in its full capacity. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think you know the, these uh, these uh, conversations about like um, you know government providing products and stuff. But I think government does provide uh, does have a scheme where you know they have things to go to you know get VR into schools. Uh, I think it's a part of the new governments. And that's, but I think for us to go and get a government contract would be a, a huge task, I would say. I mean, we would have to, I mean, you know how the Indian government is. So like getting, yeah. uh, getting, I mean, forget getting a tender. I would say like going through and completing that tender and like all the paperwork involved in it would be, I would say, in my opinion, uh, very very tedious. So I hope some some company looks at our project, uh, takes it up, 
builds builds whatever is required and and go and you know sell it to schools i guess or sell it or whatever like get the grant that gives it to schools that would be that would be cool yeah. all right man thanks a lot and uh, yeah that's pretty much it i think um, we'll we'll talk uh, next week and discuss yeah. the f- sixth update look at that six weeks yeah my god all right sounds good man talk to you later awesome all right